to Soda Session number 14. It's uh, Saturday, February the 23rd, 2008, and we're coming to you from uh, bright and sunny and icy Dayton, Ohio, here at the Shopsmith National Woodworking Academy. Um, before I get started, I have an announcement. I'd like to tell you all that for the very first time, we have <laughs> surpassed 100,000 viewers. 100,000 of you have, uh, uh, have uh, watched our sawdust uh, sessions, uh, which means that uh, either there are thousands and thousands of uh, shopsmith owners now going around that are just a little bit more knowledgeable about their tools and woodworking, or there are a handful of you somewhere who <laughs> really need a life. Um, that said, today we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about uh, doing sectional bowls on the Ringmaster. I'm going to show you a really neat trick for thickness planing, and then we're going to uh, discuss how to prevent and how to get rid of rust on your tools. Um, I'd like to warn you, as always, that when you take this knowledge out into your shop, please protect your eyes, ears, and lungs. Use all the guards that come with your machinery. Uh, and keep a push stick within easy reach and train your shop dog not to lay down behind you. Um, remember, folks, this is not uh, television. This is the live on the World Wide Web. Let's, um, let's uh, go over here to the... Uh, workbench and I'll show you what I mean by a sectional bowl and uh, it's this bowl right here or the one that I'm about to take off the clamp right here or the one you saw me working on when you came in. Uh, a sectional bowl is is uh, made up out of pie-shaped sections uh, that uh, that are glued together, and you can get uh, a number. Here's a uh, here's one. Uh, this is uh, pie-shaped sections of. Uh, cherry and walnut put together to, to form a, a step. Uh, this one here is uh, pie shaped uh, sections of, um, of maple and bloodwood that I've uh, made kind of a basket weave uh, with. Uh, got one here that I'm about ready to do and you can see how these go together. This uh, are These are put together with pie shaped sections of uh, maple, cherry, bloodwood, and paduk. Uh, nope, not paduk, pur purple heart. And uh, uh, as you can see, that's going to form a nice little, uh, uh, a nice little fan right there. <clears throat> there are some aesthetic reasons why you should, uh, why you want to do these, uh, uh, these sectional bowls. Um, the first uh, of them is that it shows the long grain all around the circumference of the bowl. Uh, if you look at a bowl that is done out of a, just an ordinary board, uh, because the, the grain goes through the bowl in a straight line, uh, you're only seeing a little long grain, uh, grain on the two sides, and you see mostly end grain um, elsewhere on the, on the bowl. And as you as you know, the long grain is the the most beautiful of the uh, uh, of the surfaces of the wood. If you take a section, a wedge like uh, like this one right here, get this or this one. Do I have? Here we go. Oh, here's one. If I take a wedge like this, and uh, you cut cut it from a piece of wood where the grain goes through the wood. See, I cut it from. From this piece of wood, notice that the grain goes through the wood from side to side, not top to bottom. So the long grain is going is going through the wood like this. Then, when you make the bowl, it will show long grain on all the sides. Uh, it, it also, because it is put together with sections, it's easy to uh, it's easy to make all sorts of uh, different patterns. Uh, here, I made the wedges. I I. Uh, I glued pieces of bloodwood 
to the sides of, of this uh, of a block like this, and then when I cut it diagonally to make the wedges, I ended up with a, with a strip of blood wood on one side. And when that was glued up, then you got uh, you got wedges uh, that look like the bottom of the bolt here, and you can make uh, that. Uh, buddy has uh, buddy has discussed. There's somebody coming to uh, to the door here. Uh, this uh, this bowl was made up of wedges of uh, of. Uh, uh, cherry and walnut. You can, as you can see, we got a step pattern off of off of this. This is pretty neat. Uh, the, there was a step pattern too in the bowl that I was turning when you first uh, uh, you first, first tuned in. The uh, uh, the fact is, is you can you can do all sorts of uh, of cool things mixing uh, both wood species and uh, types of grain. But there are also some woodworking advantages to this. Um, as you know, it is much easier to shave wood grain rather than uh, long grain rather than end grain. If you're cutting end grain, you're cutting through the cellulose fibers, and it's it's much tougher than trying to uh, than try to split the fibers along the lignin uh, that holds them uh, holds them together. Not only that, um, I've arranged these these. Um, these wedges. Take a look at the, take a look at this. The the wood grain is going through here like that. Um, if as long as I'm cutting in this direction, I'm cutting very slightly downhill when I cut. Uh, that makes it that makes it really easy to um, to shave uh, the um, uh, the wood, and uh, uh, you get it's it's much much easier remove stock that way and you get a lot more control so um, those are the re those are the um, uh, those are the reasons behind uh, the sectional bowls uh, now let me show you how to make them uh, the, per the trick is to uh, is cutting the sections and gluing them up and we're going to spend most of our time doing that. In fact, you're not going to see any woodworking on the Ringmaster. Uh, those of you who uh, haven't yet watched it, if you go back a couple sawdust sessions, uh, there is a. I show you how to cut a um, uh, a bowl from a single board on the Ringmaster, and uh, that's uh, that's. Uh, I would suggest you watch that for the remaster portion of this. Uh, this, when you glue these things together, you have that uh, you have that single board that I'm talking about. Uh, for those of you who uh, may have missed it the last time, I have put the um, Excel calculator, the ringmaster calculator that Drew and I came up with, on here, the, so that you can uh, download it if you want. Um, let's. Um, Let's go over to the uh, to the Mark V, and we'll talk about cutting the wedges. The uh, as I as I uh, told you, the wedges are made from small pieces of wood. I cut these wedges diagonally from corner to corner. Uh, the The problem is, is that in doing so, you have to hold the um, the wedges or, or the uh, these little blocks of wood at the proper orientation to the saw, and uh, that can that can be tricky, especially if you want to keep your fingers on your hands. Uh, so what I'm going to show you how to use is what I call a notch jig. This notch jig um, are it's wonderful for um, for uh, uh, sawing and sanding small parts, uh, you don't have to you don't have to worry about holding um, the uh, the blocks of wood. The notch jig holds it for you, and you can keep your hands well clear of it. Um, this th this is a Mary Jane. Can you move away from the TV? There. Okay. This is a notch jig. Um, the um, the the uh, Notch jig is, is uh, as you can see, has a notch in it, the size of the board that I'm going to cut. Now make and it fits right there in the notch. The um, 
the trick is figuring out which what size to make those to make those boards. The maximum the maximum diameter that you can saw on the um, uh, on the uh, ringmaster is um, about eleven and a half inches. Uh, therefore, the the um, the wedges that you want to make can't be any longer than five and three quarter inches. The um, the uh, in a, in addition to that, you have to plan for the angle that you're going to cut. Now, in the bowls that I, I'm showing you how to glue up, I'm using 16 segments. Uh, if you divide the number of segments you want to use into 360 degrees of a circle, you get uh, 16 into 360 is 22 and a half. So the angle that I want to saw here is 22 and a half degrees. The notch that you see here is tilted at 22 and a half degrees when it is up against the uh, when it is up against the fence. The problem is that it's very difficult to do the sawing with absolute total accuracy. Um, the, so what, I, what I, I do this in two steps. First of all, I rough out the, um, these pieces uh, with the saw and then I sand them to the precise size and, uh, and angle using yet another notch jig. Okay. this in place. Oh. I'm sure you guys do this too. I always forget to move that saw guard in for some reason. Put the upper saw guard on. Now the upper saw guard is doubly useful on this operation. Not only does it protect you from kickback, you can use it as a hold down uh, so that these uh, uh, pieces ride smoothly into the blade. Okay, we need a fence. There we go. I'm going to align the fence, and, I, and because the operation is on the other side of the shopsman from what you're from what you're looking at, I'm going to turn the shopsman around. There we go. I'm going to align the fence with this kerf in the in the notch, so the kerf rides right there in the in the saw blade. Now, I uh, to explain to you what I'm what I'm about to do. I'm going to put the notch in, or the, put the, the block of wood in the notch, and I'm going to cut it, but I'm not going to cut all the way through the notch jig. I'm going to stop. Now, um, several things, several things will, will happen. First of all, the minute I get, I get through this board, this wedge, the action of the saw will want to bring this part, which will become a wedge, a segment, up against, uh, we'll want to force it up against here, and it will it will uh, slow the saw down. So the minute that I cut through this, I want to make sure I want to make sure that I can I can turn off the uh, the motor as quickly as possible. So we put the um, notch jig in place. Make sure I've got a push if I need it. Some eye protection and. Let's turn this on and run it up to fast. Saw the minute that that uh, the minute that that cut through, it's uh, it 
that wedged and stopped the wood. So you have to be ready to turn that off right away. The, um, let's do that one more time. Now you can, you can safely, as long as your fingers don't go over the red part of the saw, you can safely press down on either side here. Let's try this. Now in that case, I was using my thumbs to push out and, and try to control that from coming from coming in, and it worked pretty well. Um, that's uh, that's how to make the wedges. Now these are approximately 22 and a half degrees. Now we've got to sand them to size and to the and to the proper angle. For that, I'm going to use. Yet, uh, yet another notch jig. Let me get set up to do some disc sanding here. show you something. We've got, I'm, I'm changing over modes here. I've still got the shot, shopsmith plugged in, but I've got the most dangerous tool uh, the shopsmith has on it right now, which is the saw. I'm going to, I'm going to grasp the, the end of the arbor and push this off the, um, off the spindle before I grab the saw by the blade itself. That way, if there were something untoward that would happen, I wouldn't I wouldn't be hurt. At least not hurt too badly. Drew and I discovered that we both talk with our hands, and if I were to lose a finger, it'd be like losing ten percent of my vocabulary. Okay, now see right now I'm probably going to have to turn this Mark V around again so you can see uh, what's going on. Okay. Now, the notch jig is going to hold these wedges at an angle to the uh, to the saw blade, I've I've uh, made that angle uh, so that uh, that when it's sanded, we'll get a uh, 22 and a half degree angle right there. But I can clamp this to the table and adjust it this way and that way to adjust that angle just as I need it. Not only that, I can I can use the the stop on the quill feed so that I sand these things all to exactly the same size. So I can get I can get every single wedge to exactly the same size and exactly the same angle. When I put this notch jig on, I'm putting this side, the short side, uh, toward me. Uh, in the in and, and the uh, the disc is rotating this way, and it will be pushing the wedge against that short that short side. If I were to mount it the other way, okay, it would push the uh, it would push the segment this way, and you would get a wedge lock effect. Um, you want you want to get that arranged so it pushes it against the short side. Let me get some. Uh, Clamps. Now when I clamp the jig on, I'm also having it overlap the table by about uh, half an inch. 
or half an inch, an eighth of an inch. This is so that um, this is so that I don't sand the edge of the table. All right, let's put this in, and I need the um, angle gauge. Where did I put that? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a little wixy. You can also use an inclinometer that you can get in uh, in most hardware stores. Um, but this is this is neat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, to put the wixy on the jig, turn it on, zero it out, and then put it on the wedge that I'm going to be sanding. And okay, that's 22.2 degrees. So I'm I'm a, th a third of a degree off. Uh, if you think about that, that's that's a lot because there's 16 sections. Uh, that would mean that I would be um, over three degrees off by the time I got that bowl uh, glued up. So let's get this to 22.5. Let's put this in here. to a complete stop. You don't want to put your thumb in there and have it rub off your thumbprint. Okay. <laughs> I did it again twice in a row. It's 22.5 degrees. Uh, um, obviously you're not going to see, you're not going to get to see the best part of this, which is me futzing around trying to, when I did this for real guys, I, I, it took me nine tries. Um, anyway, we're right now at 22.5 degrees. Now I'm going to loosen the depth stop. Okay. I'm going to hold that up against the um, against the wedge and tighten the stop. Everything is tight there. Now, and one sanded. sanded and if you'll put these together you'll see that there is not a lick of difference between them. They're both exactly the same size and exactly the same angle. 22.5 22.5 So let's, uh, let's pretend that I have done this 16 times and we have 16 of these little suckers and let's go back to the workbench now. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, as you can see. When I'm, I've, I glue these up in halves, I do eight segments at a time. This is the gluing jig that I have that I have made. Um, it's just a piece of particle board covered with uh, formica, so that the glue doesn't stick. Uh, I have a straight edge right here that these these wedges 
uh, rest against, and then I put the wedges in place, and then or put the segments in place, and then hold them in with these locking wedges. The locking wedges all push towards the center, and uh, uh, that provides the pressure needed to form a good glue bond. <coughs> now, there is an important reason that... Uh, <laughs> oh, there's somebody... Uh, yeah. Okay, I feel like I'm aboard the Star Trek. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But there's an important reason why you only glue up one half at a time, and that is that despite uh, the as as careful as I was to get a 22.5 degree angle over there on the sander, uh, it's quite possible that this angle is actually 20.52 or 53, and it, in other words, it's off a little bit. And because it's, it's uh, off a little bit, it's going to be exacerbated by the fact that we're gluing eight of them up together. Let's say, let's say that it's, it's off uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 uh, hundredths of a degree. Well, it'll be off of a degree and a half by the time we get over here. So, um, or, or a fraction of a degree. Anyway, it'll be, it'll be significant enough that we can see it and it will interfere with the, uh, with the glue bond. So what I'm doing is I glue these up in this, in the, in this uh, little jig here, making one half at a time. Then let me bring the sander in. I take the belt sander and notice how I've, I've put the um, the table in here. Uh, the table is precisely 90 degrees from the belt, uh, and then I take these these uh, half pieces. Sand them flat. Now, when they go together, they'll meet perfectly. Okay, so it will look as if you have done an absolutely pinpoint, perfect job of of cutting these uh, uh, cutting these segments. When in fact you've uh, just uh, sort of lived by your wits through the whole affair. Once you, once you have uh, uh, these things glued together, uh, the idea is to cut them into rings, uh, like this on the Ringmaster. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, the, well, I showed you the last time, uh, or a couple of sauna sessions ago, and it was, um, uh, it's, it's just gonna be the same thing over again. Uh, but we need to we need to glue these together, and uh, I've got here an assembly jig, very simple. Uh, it's a 12-inch disc. Once again, part of a board that's uh, covered with Firmica. You can make these out of sink cutouts. If you can usually get those for a dollar a piece at some lumber stores. Um, then I put a counter, I countersunk a hole here and put a half inch carriage bolt through it. This is an eight inch long all thread carriage board a bolt. The all thread means that it's got threads from the top to the bottom so you, that we can glue up uh, two sections or, uh, or uh, six depending on, uh, uh, depending on how deep we want to make the bolt. Now the first step here is is to put this bowl together in um, in the order in which you want to uh, to assemble it. Um, I have I have drawn uh, on this uh, on this disc. I have drawn several concentric circles uh, made out of um, just in pencil. And these concentric circles help me center the very first disc that I put down. Um, otherwise, I, I won't get centered around uh, around the central uh, uh, pole, the uh, 
the post. Also, the, something you should know about the uh, the clamping post, the carriage bolt, that uh, that is um, uh, oh, yeah, there's the mark. That is stuck in place with epoxy glue. Drew and I have found that if you leave this carriage bolt so that it uh, it can wiggle back and forth, and it, it may not be straight up and down when you clamp the um, when you uh, clamp the rings together. And if it's leaned to one side, it will slowly pull the rings over to the opposite side as you apply pressure. And uh, that, of course, is a bad thing that you... And uh, so as a result, what I've, um, uh, what I've got here helps you to... Uh, with this thing straight up and down, helps you to get it. It helps you to get it uh, right the first time, and uh, not have to to mess with this thing getting pulling things out. Okay, now this is the hard part. This is where you have to have to futz and futz and futz until it finally is. Uh, okay. Now, I have got three of the four rings aligned, um, and I'm looking for my master here. There uh, see it? Okay, there it is. I've got three of the four ring, rings, rings aligned. Now, uh, at this point, if I um, mess with that last ring, I'm going to... Uh, the other rings are going to uh, come apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the three rings that I have aligned and then get that last ring in place. Okay, there we go. Now, now I can now I can mess with this. You have to. I have to keep turning this until it's uh, until it's properly aligned. bowl there for a minute. <laughs> okay, now now it's uh, this is this is a this as you can see this is an important part of the uh, uh, important part and it takes a while and you really you really uh, want to spend some time doing this. Now I've got that uh, I've got that done. I'm going to get a pencil here and I'm going to put. Two marks, one down one side of the bowl and one down the other side, so that I can get these lined up together. Now I'm going to put a wiggly line through one, so I can discuss, uh, I can uh, tell it from the other. Now let's um, let's glue this up. I am going to use that trick that I showed you last soda session 
where you uh, you use a little bit of sandy grit in order to keep the um, the pieces from shifting on you. Now the I'm using though a much much um, finer grit. Well, not that much finer grit. About a 100 instead of a instead of 60. And the reason for that, for the for the finer grit, is that the um, uh, well, need a little uh, extra glue here. We're not getting the squeeze out that I want. the The reason for the finer grit is that I don't want to have to press too hard to get the grit to bite in to the surfaces of the wood. Uh, there, but some of you have expressed uh, some uh, concern that the grit may uh, wear away the sharp edge of your tools. And uh, yeah, that's possible. Uh, it is aluminum oxide, and aluminum oxide is used for grinding. And uh, uh, aluminum oxide will uh, bite into your tools, but it is there is such a little bit of it. I mean, we're talking about about uh, somewhere between three and uh, ten grains of of grit in here, so it, it's not going to do that much uh, that much damage. If for some reason uh, you want to avoid any damage whatsoever to your tools, you can go out and get flint sandpaper. Uh, Flint sandpaper is actually made with silica sand, and uh, it, it is not anywhere near as hard as um, as aluminum oxide, and uh, therefore won't uh, won't hurt the tools. The uh, problem is is that flint sandpaper is getting hard to find. So what you may actually have to do is go out and buy some uh, silica sand. At a, it comes in 90-pound bags at a, uh, a lumber yard. And then hope that uh, you have some other application for it. Because believe me, if if all you ever do is use it for keeping your your uh, your glue joints from slipping, 90 pounds of sand will last you <coughs> and your uh, and your progeny probably on to the seventh generation of woodworking in your family. Um, oh, oh. Forgot the grid. Rather have too much on here than not enough. Okay. Okay, looks like it's nicely aligned all the way around. Fender washer's on. And a wing nut. Tighten her down and watch to see. Okay, looks good. There's no no slipping that's going on, and we've got squeeze out all the way around. All right, there you go. Cool. Okay, that's done. We the next thing you would do with this, of course, is um, is uh, let it dry and let it dry for 24 hours. You want the glue to cure as uh, until it's uh, within 95 uh, percent of its strength before you turn this. 
Uh, don't try to turn something that's only uh, been uh, curing for four or even eight hours. Twenty-four hours. Let let it stand, and then uh, then uh, you can turn the bowl. Okay. Mm -hmm.